In this video, you're going to learn about all the classification metrics that you must know whenever you're starting solving a classification type of problem statement. In this video, you're going to learn two different ways to calculate classification metrics. One is based on the classes itself and one is based on probabilities. And the third part, I'm going to show you how to print those probabilities and round it up to two decimal places or three decimal places. But before we dive in, Hey problem solvers, my name is Kunal Naik. I am the founder of Data Science Masterminds. I am on a mission to help you learn and apply data science effectively so that you can quickly grow in your career. So do me a favor by subscribing to my channel and hitting the bell notification button so that you get notified whenever I release an awesome smart trick like this one. Also, if you like my work, please feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues so that they can accelerate their journey. You can also contribute to my mission by hitting the super thanks button and helping me continue this journey so that others like you can learn and apply data science effectively to grow in their career. So let's begin by looking at the setup. We're going to import the libraries pandas and numpy. Then we're going to do logistic regression import also. Then we're going to import the data. This is the data. Also, now we're going to split the data into X and Y, that is Y actual, and we're going to take the train data DPNM. So if you want to get the context of this particular business problem, I'll place the link of the Kaggle data set within the description section. And also this code link will be placed in the description section below. So Y actual is equal to train DPNM. We many times represent it by Y, but for this particular code, you're going to put it as Y actual. So when I'm calculating the metric, you're going to be knowing which of those variables I'm using to calculate the metrics. Then we're going to take the X data and we're going to drop any ID column and the target column itself and have X. We'll do any dummy encoding just to ensure that any of the categorical variables do not stay as is and convert into flags or dummies. Then we'll build the model that is balanced model we're going to build because you're going to see the reason of why we are doing this a little later when before we do the calculation. Then we are going to fit the model. Then we are going to predict first the classes and then we're going to predict using predict probability. So notice these two functions predict and predict probability. This gives the classes itself that is zero and one or yes or no. This gives the probabilities that is a score between zero and 0 0.1. Now both of them the calculations of the metrics will be a little different. So we're going to only focus on those metrics that are essential that you should start with. Now that we have predicted the probabilities and the classes, let's see how it's going to be looking against the actual. And so we can decide what kind of metrics we can use for the kind of scenarios we are in. So I'm going to take predicted actual and predicted classes. The PD dot data frame is going to combine the y actual. This is the y actual that we have taken as is from the data set. Y predicted is the one that we built from the model and predicted. And this is the one that is the classes itself. So if you see, if I combine these two, the, suppose we had y actual as one, then y predicted is coming as one. So there is no probabilities of values that is available here. It just directly gives one or zero. So this is the one way. With this, we're going to do five different metrics. And in the next scenario, we will have the predicted probabilities. Now to get the predicted probabilities, typically you get it for both the zeros and ones. And so we don't want both of them, right? We just want the positive class predicted probabilities. And so what we do is we take the Y predicted probability and if you print it, you will get both of these things, right? But we just want this one. So what we will do is we'll say Y predicted probability say colon, which means saying that give me all the rows and just give me the first column that is this one, right? So this is the zeroth column. This is the first column and we just want these values. So if I just take that, I'll also, I'll only get the 0 0.56, 0 0.56, 0 0.50, 0 0.53. These are the values that I get. And that is what we want to be, you know, calculating our matrix on top of. So if I had to plot it against the actuals, you'll see that Y actual is one and the Y predicted is 0 0.56. Since the threshold is 0 0.5, in this previous case, the class has changed to one as opposed to being a probability such as this. Later on, you'll realize that just playing with the cutoff itself will also give you significant improvement or worsen your performance depending on what cutoff you choose. Next. 
we're going to see why we use the clashed weight in the logistic regression. And that has to do with what is a balance of a class. A balance of a class is typically 50-50%. That means if in a data set you have a target variable and 50% of them are 1 and 50% of them are 0, then that is a balanced data set. However, in this particular scenario, we, are, we will see that if I just take the dependent variable, the y variable and do a value counts and just plot a bar on top of it, you will see that there is an imbalance between it. Ideally, both this bar should be equal, but they aren't. And so this is a class imbalance. That is why we want to balance the classes before we actually start modeling. Also, the model is going to think that there are equal, you know, it has to predict in equal probabilities. That is equal number of zeros and equal number of ones. And we need to give the model a way to understand how it can handle the imbalance such as this scenario. And so there are some advantages of some of the metrics with the balance scenarios. And we also have to consider the imbalance and then choose the metrics accordingly. But this video, we're going to focus on just calculating the metrics. So the first method is calculating based on the class that is yes or no. And the first one that we have to do is the calculate accuracy one. And in this, there are two methods. One, you take the actual data and from the model itself, you can score it, right? So this model has a method called as a score and you pass the X and Y actual and it'll print the score for you. So it'll predict internally and then compare it with Y actual and then it'll give you this particular score. Now, this one we typically don't use, right? We generally do make the predictions and then using the Y actual and the Y predicted, we keep calculate the metrics because we, ha we have to calculate several different metrics on top of the predictions that we have, which is why the second method is going to be the more better option that we are going to use. And we're going to mostly use this for all other metrics also. So what we're going to do now here is that SKLearn has a library called as metrics and it has all sorts of metrics, classification, regression, and there are a variety of those metrics. So you can go ahead and check out or Google SKLR metrics and you're going to see all the metrics that it will provide. However, we're going to focus on just the five right now. So from SKLR metrics, we're going to import accuracy score. And then we're going to say print, give the accuracy score function and print Y actual along with the Y predicted. So give it just Y actual and Y predicted. So the actual one and the predictive one, if you see, we are just giving it this Y actual and this Y predicted. Now we give that and it will calculate the metrics on top of it, which is going to be 0 0.550. This is the exact score, right? So we're going to use this to keep it simple and consistent for all other metrics. So that's how you calculate accuracy. Moving on to recall, just from the place you have accuracy, you can also take recall score from sklearn.metrics. You just want to import all of them in one shot. That is by saying recall score, comma accuracy, comma precision score, comma F1 score, and you provide just one line of import. But for this scenario, we are doing it separately. So I'm just importing one by one separately. So similarly, you'll provide the recall score and we just change one thing from this above one, right? So we just change this function the y actual and y predicted remain the same. So if you run that, you'll get a 0.72 score. Then precision. Similarly, you can import precision score and say precision score y actual y predicted and it will give you a precision score. Similarly, you can do F1 score from sklearn metrics and then print it and you're going to get 0.4177. Now, there is one nice function or method that basically gives the entire classification report that is all the above and a little more that is going to be called as the classification report i typically use this because it just gives me all the calculation in one shot so we have basically precision here but notice it gives it for the zeros and it gives it for the ones typically all of the above metrics is printing out the scores for this one so if you see the 0 0.29, the precision is going to be the 0 0.29, 0 0.72, the 0 0.72 of recall is going to be the recall score that we have here. And similarly, the accuracy score. So you want to be mindful about 
which number you're looking at. Typically, when you're starting off, start off with this particular line and this particular line, right? So these two are the ones that will be most important focus for you when you are initially starting off. As your knowledge improves, you will be able to interpret the rest of them. So keep your focus here for this particular classification report. Now with this, we have successfully learned the precision recall F1 score and the accuracy metric. And classification report just combines all of them. However, with the predicted probabilities, we can do one calculation and that is going to be this one the ROC AUC score. So here, much like the other metrics, you're going to say from sklearn.metrics import ROC AUC score. You give it the same thing. You give Y actual, Y predicted, but this time instead of giving Y predicted, so we're going to change this to Y predicted proba and run it. And it'll give us an ugly error saying Y should be a 1D array got an array shape of 3000 by two. This is because it is giving the zeroth and one probabilities also, right? So which is why we need to give the square bracket, right? Give comma, give column here and give the first column here as an input. And so if you do that, then it will do a ROC AUC calculation score. So that's why you need to be mindful about using the probabilities. It can't simply directly use it. You just need to give it the positive class only or negative class depending on the situation you are in. But most scenarios, you want to start off with giving the predicted probabilities for the positive class. And further, what can you do with this? We can also do a plot using ROC AUC curve. And this is mostly used when both the classes are important. That is ones are equally important as the zeros. The last step is proper formatting. And you'll have noticed that when we take the train accuracy and print it out, is going to be printing 0 0.555033 and there are a lot of decimal places. So in short, what we want to do is just get it to maybe two or three decimal places and it should be looking fine. Also, sometimes we may want to mix some text with it and print it. So let's see how we can do that. I will take this train accuracy into a variable using this function. We're going to say y actual and y predicted. And we do that, we can print the accuracy. Now, the first method is using the percentile method. And uh, the way it is done is you basically provide within single quotation the percentage dot 2f that is meaning the two decimals and then you say percentile train accuracy when you do that it is going to press uh, print two decimals if i do the three it's going to put three decimals and that's how it's automatically going to round off also so it's going to do that and uh, you, you can provide either variables or you can directly provide this function itself and it will do the work so that's the first method the second method is using dot format and so what you do is you basically take the values and say zero colon two f so basically this curly bracket represent that there should be a, and we say dot format and you give train accuracy here and so it'll print this number and it'll put it with decimals notice the same thing is uh, available here this point two f is up. so it's going to do that and along with a zero right so here we did not do a zero here we can say 0 0.5 so that's how it's going to be printing it and this one we can have multiple numbers so we can add another curly bracket and then say comma and give another value and continue to give values and uh, a lot of numbers getting printed the last part of it is can we put a text yes so within this quotation you can put a text and you don't have to do that text concatenation and all of that thing right so it's that way it makes it simple to print this kind of number and so you do that and you say top format and then you say train accuracy and you're able to print that and you can see you can say train accuracy 0 0.56 and then you can add another line say test accuracy 0 0.57 or something like that and you will have printed your train accuracy. so this way you are not only calculating the metrics but also taking the aesthetics of how it's going to be printed and so that's all i have for metric calculations and printing next steps definitely you want to check out confusion matrix and the roc auc plot so for that i'm going to do another video